the end of Hollister. We've got the foothills on the north end. We've got the green belts on the south end. We have a lot of people who reside as residents on Collister, so thank you so much for highlighting that. Several of you guys are biking. A few of you do take the bus. Um, and actually, several of you guys are visiting the neighborhood attractors, either be the library or the business. And we've got several of you guys who actually drive your children to school. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause just a little bit longer. There's about 14 respondents who have participated. And that's about right when I look at the number of people who are actually on today's call. All right, um, before we go any further onto the next slide, I just wanna bring your attention. We are recording this. Um, that just popped up as kind of a reminder. So just be aware we are recording this and it's, it's really truly for us to capture this information as we move forward. Um, let's see, Debbie. All right, Debbie, I'm gonna pause for just a second. You're pleading with us to hold on for just a little bit real quick. So uh, you figured out the Mentimeter. Again, it looks, and I'm just gonna highlight these. We've got biking is a big one on Collister. Biking and recreational activity. Um, I'm seeing that seems to be a big highlight for this neighborhood. Debbie's good. All right, Debbie, welcome to, welcome to, the, um, to our, our meeting. Let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. Okay, I want to know, uh, and so important, and I know earlier there was nine of you guys who highlighted that you're residents along Collister. And so, you know, for all of you guys who are residents, for all of you who are navigating this space, um, I want you guys to tell me, like, what is it you like about Collister? And, you know, to give you some ideas, if it's the tree canopy you like, if it's the ability to park on your street, you appreciate that. Um, go ahead and just highlight a few of those things. And, this really is going to look more like a word cloud. And I'm sorry, we didn't use a word cloud. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and just fill it out and we'll go ahead and input it in there and see what pops up. Are you guys filling out the words? Okay. Trees. I recognize that. I've gone up and down Collister several times now and you have quite the canopy. No speed bumps, thank you. Wide enough shoulders to make it comfortable for walking and biking. Several of you have highlighted that this is your route to get down to State Street. Foothills Connection falls lot right along with the folks that mentioned they wanna get up to the foothills for recreational access. Direct access to your home is important. Trees, trees, trees. I'm hearing there's trees, this is important. The rural character of the neighborhood, two lanes, keep it coming. Nice neighborhood street for walking and access to homes. It's close to town, but feels far away. Foothills connection, I'm seeing a lot of that desire to get access to the foothills. Low enough traffic, mature trees, shade, no parking on the street, safe neighborhood easy commute and you really, I'm hearing a lot of emphasis about no speed bumps. Low enough traffic to allow relatively comfortable biking traffic, light to easy access to State Street. Lots and lots of stuff about tree canopy. And you know, you guys are really participating in this, um, in this question, so I'm gonna give you a few more moments. Uh, Mike, you had a question where it says you are not seeing some of these inputs. Um, are you able to see the screen with everybody's comments coming in? And if answer in the chat box. Hey, nice street for walking and access to home. It's close enough to town. I think I'm seeing a lot of repetitive questions here at answers, which means um, you guys all have several of the same thoughts. There's a gentleman, M.B. Stein, how do you answer the survey? It should be a mentioning meter if you haven't logged on yet. Um, we'll go ahead and repost that one more time. And also for those who may be struggling with actually participating in the questions as we move, through, uh, move forward, do know that there is also a survey in the end that you're welcome to participate and fill out as well. Rural character, small scale, it's not been turned into a thoroughfare, so you're liking the uh, 
the current footprint of the road. All right, so we've captured several of your questions and I'm seeing that they may be filtering through a second time. With that being said, I'm gonna flip on over to the next question. And again, I really wanna emphasize as we're going through this, we are capturing your input, but also recognize that in the end, you have an opportunity once more, and that is through SurveyMonkey to fill out some of these questions. And so if there's some challenges that you're going through to participate in the menti.com, we do have another means we're gonna ask you to engage with us. So uh, this question is, do you think calls or drive needs improvement? Yes or no? Simple question, yes or no. Um, go ahead and just answer that and we'll see where it all falls. All right, it's coming in. We've got 72% that is saying yes and 28% that is saying no. And guys, we're gonna go into more detail about that here in just a moment. So Don, I can't answer these questions. Okay, Don, we'll work with you to make sure that you get plugged into this process. And we've got people working the chat box to make sure that we've got you squared away. What is it? All right, so we've got 74 of you that have replied that says you'd like to see some improvements on Collister and then 25 of you who are a no. And I, get, I recognize this is a yes or no question. Some may like to see some improvements, but not all. And so in next slide, I'm actually gonna bring that up and we're gonna ask you guys to go in a little bit more depth. So with that being said, let's flip on over to the next slide. So if you do believe that Callister Drive needs some improvements, what type of users? Uh, tell us what type of users, please check all that apply. Do you wanna see improvements for motorists? Do you wanna see improvements for pedestrians, cyclists, or other? Um, let us know. And the person who's hitting other, I'd really love to know what, uh, in the chat box, if you'd like to give us an idea of what that other is. Lots of you guys want to see some improvements for cyclists. Lots of you, several of you have highlighted pedestrians. Don, it looks as though we've got somebody working with you to figure out maybe what's holding uh, up the issues. So we'll keep, we'll uh, continue to stay engaged with you through this. All right, three for motors would like to see improvement. 18 of you guys love to see some improvements as it pertains to cyclists. Hey, Katie, I see that you're um, highlighting other as ADA or wheelchair access, specific concerns as it applies to pedestrians. So we recognize that and capture that your other is some ADA improvements along the road. All right, let's give it just one more moment. Thanks, Katie, for highlighting what that other is. We're gonna move on to slide number eight. And this one is, do you think Hollister needs to be improved the, higher, the entire distance? Because we recognize it's a really long corridor between State and Hill Drive or only in certain locations. And so again, the entire distance or only in specific locations. And we're gonna ask you here in just a moment to help us identify where those are at. So 73 of you guys, 57 of you are saying it entire distance. All right, we're splitting in half, folks. It's kind of like a race almost. We're 50, 39, all right, the entire distance, 61% of you have come in and said, you'd like to see some enhancements for the whole uh, entire all of Collister. 39, 37% of you only identified specific locations. Well, I appreciate you guys highlighting that because in the next uh, question, we're going to ask you to give us a little bit more detail. And Thomas, yes, we're talking just state to Hill Road is our boundary for the actual project itself. And that's a really good question. I should have highlighted earlier. The boundaries in which we're going to work with and we are not going to go any further north than Hill Road and north, no further south than state. Although we recognize that there are tractors on both sides, foothills to the north and the green belt to the south, uh, we are going to stay within the confines of Hill Road and State Street. So here's an opportunity. Please drop a pin on the location on Collister Drive that you think needs the most attention. So drag your little pin on your um, survey, move it over, and let us know where it is you guys would like to see us spend a little bit of our time. I've got one hanging out over there by the river. Um, We'll ask you guys here in a moment, maybe what that's about. 
So four of you guys have highlighted one specific, that was my fault, I moved the cursor. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. So we've got four of you guys have highlighted a really important area you want us to pay a little more attention to. Um, I'm going to give you guys a few more moments because I know there's several of you participating in this process and I'm not seeing enough dots to reflect the number of participants. Two of you guys have highlighted that the Hill Road intersection at Collister is problematic. Give it one more moment. The map is small. All right. Good, good point. I'm not exactly sure how we may be able to fix that, but that is a really good insight. With that, I'm going to give you guys a little bit more time to navigate through this. And we're going to figure out if we can enlarge that map a little bit. They're all shaking their heads up and we can't enlarge the map. So I'll just give it a moment. And again, I want to emphasize the survey monkey at the end of this process. We will also be able to capture some of your input and insight into some of these specific areas you'd like us to see. The irregularities in sidewalks creates a mismatched pedestrian corridor down the street. Duly noted. Thank you, Sam, for highlighting that. The sidewalk needs to be continued down at least one side of the street is what was um, highlighted here in our chat box. And you know, if you if you want to just speak to some of your concerns, guys, I encourage you to use that chat box. Um, I'm going to continue to look at it as we're going through this process and allow us to have that little bit of dialogue back and forth. And for questions that are maybe outside the scope of the slide we're on, I'm going to talk to those at the end. All right. With that being said, I think we've got uh, some some sites captured here. So let's move on to that next question. All right. Now here's an opportunity for you guys to highlight why it is you picked that location. So please tell us of the location you pinned and why you chose it. If you weren't able to pin for whatever reason, um, still go ahead and just highlight if there's areas along Collister that come to mind that you want to see improvements, tell us now. Um, MB Stein, yes, we need a sidewalk down at least one side of the Collister for the safety of children. We've got some, that is one of the stretches where people regularly speed, stop signs, so forth. It's parking that may be impeding the ability for bikes to get through. So I'm hearing all the chat. Let's go ahead and look back at the screen. Let's highlight some of that. We've got lack of consistent sidewalks. Um, maybe these are highlights in some of these pins. Hill to John's Landing lacks sidewalk and safe biking. Excesses speed, 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 speed. All right, I've seen several highlights about speed control or maybe traffic calming. It's difficult to see from John's Landing north on Collister. All right, so maybe some site issues. You guys want to see some enhancement for walking. Safety is really paramount. People are regularly speeding, stop signs, speed bumps to slow people down. So maybe throwing out some ideas and that's perfectly fine. Bike lanes, again, another idea being thrown out. It's hard to exit the Collister Shopping Center. And guess what, guys? More speeding. Uh, we've lived on the street since 85 speed bumps for speeders. Thank you guys for giving me your insight. And you know, for those who reside on Collister, you know, this is your neighborhood. So please uh, take this chance to tell me what you want to see it become. You're right there on Collister. You live it every day. Your input is so valuable. Areas that don't have sidewalks and bike lanes need to be improved to accommodate us. It can be hard to exit Collister Shopping Center. I think I highlighted that or I'm hearing it more than once. All right. Well, with that being said, I think we've captured several of your insights on why you pinned where you did. So we're going to flip on over to the next slide. And again, I want to encourage you, Pat, you use the chat box to give us some insights on areas you want to see some improvements. Pat, again, I'm hearing the no speed bump. So keep them coming. Keep your comments coming. We're capturing that. Back to the slide, please tell us about any other locations along Collister Drive that could use some improvements and why. Mike, I'm seeing your comment, Hill Road and Collister is a mess for traffic, noise level is way high. And I suspect that's a lot to do with the trucks as well. All right, I'm seeing some starting to come in, need speed bumps, no sidewalks. Dawn, I heard you, um, you'd like to see no sidewalks added to Collister, thanks for that feedback. Um, speed bumps needed for drag racers at night. So what I'm hearing when I hear about speeds and traffic is we oftentimes look to that as traffic calming. 
how it is that we can make it comfortable and address the speeds. Need for sidewalk. Bloom Street from Collister to State. People are using that now as a shortcut to get to State. Really good insight, and those who are living there know that best. Hill Road, Collister is light. Hill Road and Collister, no sidewalks on Collister north of Catalpa. Almost all of it needs consistent sidewalks. So I'm hearing this like hodgepodge of existing sidewalks or this need for additional sidewalks throughout the whole corridor so it's continuous. Sidewalks, sidewalks, sidewalks. Guess what, guys? I'm hearing a lot of desire for sidewalks. No barriers such as speed bumps for bicyclists. All right, well, we need to figure out a way to keep the cyclists moving through the space. No speed bumps, no sidewalks. Hearing a lot of information about uh, safe biking. Um, and you guys are all using chat, so I appreciate that. Keep it coming. All right, so I'm starting to see it kind of filter through, so we're gonna jump on into the next slide. Pat, um, I'm seeing your question mark about Menti. Menti, we've got somebody who's gonna answer that here shortly. Ernie, thanks for your insight about school zone signs by Catalpa. All right, you know, as I came into this, we're not coming to you with an idea of what we want your neighborhood to look like, so we want you guys to help us engage in that process. More importantly, throw out your ideas. So with that being said, what kinds of ideas for enhancing Hollister Drive for all users would honestly fit this area? So if you have the perfect vision of what you want your neighborhood to look like, here's your chance to tell us. Scott, I hear it. You mentioned you'd like to see sufficient sidewalks. Or no, that there already are sufficient sidewalks already. Thanks for that input. All right, I'm gonna pause for just a moment, allow you guys an opportunity to start throwing out your ideas. Consistency. MB Stein, half a call has no sidewalks where kids have to walk to school. Thank you. The lingering word up there, guys, is consistency. So here's your chance, and I encourage you to throw out some ideas. What does Collister look like to you? What do you want it to become? More street lights, something to slow down speeders. Here we go. This is actually so um, encouraging. I'm seeing some of this. Traffic levels is high. We want to see complete streets. And when I read the word complete streets, I hear sidewalks, bicycle facilities, comfort for bi both bikes and pets. We see the desire for cyclists. We want consistent sidewalks. We want safe. We want it to be safe. Um, we've got pedestrian, bike lanes, more sidewalks, more sidewalks. Traffic levels too high. Keep it coming, guys. Just keep throwing out your ideas. Bike lanes. So I want to highlight for each word as it grows, that means that that number of people who are saying that word is also increasing. So the 10 people who participated, it may be that sidewalk seems to be rising in a preference. Um, pedestrian safety in different ways has also been highlighted here too. Um, all right, with that, we've captured several of your comments. Bike lanes, bike lanes, sidewalks. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause for a second. Don, I see your comment. Speeding cars can jump the sidewalk and minimum sidewalks need to connect to Collister, Catalpa for schools and park. Consistency is important, multi-use pathways, neighborhood friendly, parking pockets, focus on the entire neighborhood, enforcement, multi-use pathway, complete streets. So we're seeing several words or um, be kind of put in a different way. And so that's perfectly fine. I am seeing, however, consistency sidewalk bulb out seem to be rising to the top. Uh, Catopo Street is horrible how it was redone. It is not safe, Don. Thank you so much for your feedback. And Don, I want to give you my contact information when it's over. Um, I love to hear some of your insights. All right, parking pockets, crosswalks, cyclists, parking, so on and so forth. So we did capture a lot of what you guys see as ideas for your neighborhood. Um, let's go ahead and flip on over to the next slide. Pat, thank you. We recognize you like Catalpa. All right, so now here we want to help you by, well, we actually want to hear from you and you help us identify what solutions or options you would not want to see on Collister. So now's the time to tell us like, what do you definitely not want to see on Collister? So just one word, if we can, no speed bumps, speed bumps. <laughs> Heard ya. Sidewalks, Donna here, you don't want, you'd like to not see sidewalks on Collister. And Don, make sure to put it in the, um, 
Oh, oh, you can't. Okay, we're capturing it. No speed bumps, no speed bumps. More bikes, speed bumps. You you do not want to see it widened. No more stop lights, particularly at hill. Speed bumps. Hey guys, I'm hearing a lot about speed bumps. You really don't want to see speed bumps. Duly noted, keep them coming. Street parking stop lights do not widen. You do not want less yard, less trees, no speed bumps, no sidewalks on the west side. I recognize that it's important. Tree canopy in a neighborhood is extremely important and we recognize that. So thank you for highlighting it. Don't ruin it like Catulpa. Additional lanes, you do not wanna see any additional lanes. Center lane, do not widen and no lights at Hill Road. Don't make it look like a highway, no multi lanes for cars and whatever you do, don't widen it. Speed bump, sidewalk, traffic. You don't wanna see any of those things. Traffic lights. Full-blown street design, you'd rather not see that. Parking at the expense, I'm capturing that when it, it went away. Hold on. Parking at the expense of something. Additional lanes, you don't wanna see parking. I do not widen. Do not make it look like a highway. Okay, so I'm repeating several of the things that have already come through. Please know that we are capturing all of this um, as it goes through outside of what you see on your screen. So we are able to take that data back. So your input and insight is so important. Parking at the expense of walking and biking. All right, I hear you. Okay, with that being said, Dawn, thank you so much. Make traffic flow better on another street. Um, and from Candy, no more than two lanes. So this is stuff you guys are populating in the chat box. So if you can't do it on the screen, I encourage you to participate in the chat box. And like I said, we're going to capture it. I'm also noticing we have had several more participants join us and we are going to be doing this a second time at 5.30. So if you are just now joining us, um, know that you can come back in at 5.30 and catch the first part of this or as I've highlighted several times, guys, I'm going to encourage you to participate in the survey when this is all said and done, um, because that's going to be so important for us to capture a lot of this information. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. All right, like I said, when I first started today's meeting, it is your neighborhood, this is your community. ACHD does not want to come in there and tell you what we're going to make your community become. We want you to help us. And the best way in which to do it is to find out what are your values and what are your goals? What do you want your neighborhood to become? So what neighborhood values and goals should ACHG consider when looking at any changes to Collister if we decide changes are necessary? So use this opportunity to tell us like, what is that? Is it a safe community, a safe neighborhood? Is it somewhere that you're comfortable biking? What does that look like? What are the values? What are the goals? you want us to take into account for your neighborhood. Inclusive, pedestrian, and ADA friendly, safe. Don, I'm hearing from you, listen to the people who actually live on Collister and have for years. And Don, that's actually why I'm going to give you my contact information when this is all said and done. I recognize you live on Collister and I wanna talk with you personally. So um, remind me to get you my contact information, you and I can chat. Safe, pedestrian, ADA friendly, bike friendly, safety seems to be paramount. Aesthetics, aesthetics is so important. Intimacy, um, we've got family, we want it pet friendly, we want it slow. These are all your goals and your values. Kathy, listen to the people, meet with the neighbors. Um, MB Stein, you live on Collister too, and all of you guys, let's chat. I'll give you my contact information and we can have more conversation. Maintain the agricultural nature of the neighborhood so that rural feels important to many of you guys. Pedestrian movement, pet friendly, pretty and shaded trees. So back to that tree canopy is so important. Safe, inclusive. Like I said earlier, the bigger the word means, the more of you guys are participating. So we've got slow, safe, inclusive, walk to the library, outdoor activities. Uh, and, you know, we know that you guys have so many important attractors. You've got up on Hill Road, you've got the Greenbelt. We know you guys are using this for recreational access to some of those great facilities. And, and I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that in some of your comments. Walkability, roundabout, walking to school, neighbor, uh, family, safe, inclusive. 
And I want to highlight, guys, for several of you, my contact information email was um, actually put there in the chat box. And I'm going to follow up there shortly and actually give you my phone number to my office line, and we can talk too. So slow, safe, inclusive. We've got 16 of you who've participated, but I know there's several more of you on here. Um, so I'll give it one more moment and just keep highlighting slower streets, walk to the library, trees. And, you know, I'm hearing a lot about tree canopy is really important. So, and it's highlighted and the larger the word is, the more you guys are saying it. Inclusive, family, and slow. All right, with that being said, let's move on to the next uh, slide. If you could visualize the perfect Collister Drive, what would that look like? And again, we're here to help you guys navigate through this process, help us make a determination of what Collister could look like, what is perfect to you. So go ahead and just input that information and I'll start reading them off. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get my phone number up there so you guys can call me if there's any concerns. Or Don, I wanna encourage you to call and chat with me. Less through traffic and a way to slow the cars down. Thank you, Don, that is good insight. You reside on the street, so you see it every day. It's perfect like it is now. Dead end at Collister and Hill. Properly managed car speeds, so it's easily and safely usable by both pedestrians and cyclists. Similar to Catulpa, green canopy, walkability, and a pleasant drive. Um, reading over here, Ernie, you want us to reduce the speed limit. And guys, if you haven't seen it yet, my phone number is there in the chat box. So um, Dawn and you know those who reside on the street, give me a call. I'd love to chat with you. Um, wide area for walking and biking, landscape separation from narrow lanes for cars. Several of you bike, walkable. We need sidewalks down at least one side of the street. This area is not rural anymore. There's too much traffic to not have safe walks, uh, sidewalks next to school. Trees, I'm hearing a lot about tree canopy. A neighborhood safe street for auto, bikes, and pedestrians. It's not just a corridor. Two lane traffic with consistent sidewalks, wide shoulders for biking and parking. Wide sidewalks and bike lanes. Sidewalks, one side, keep two lanes, dedicated bike paths for both uh, bike paths versus car parking. Again, I'm hearing it's perfect as it is, don't touch it. Multi-use paths on both sides, two lanes, parking on one side, and um, desired around trees, something about trees, but I'm, my takeaway from you guys is keep the trees. Um, Mike, the main issue of Collister is the Hill Road and Collister intersection. This is where everything seems to happen, uh, traffic flow. Thanks for that insight. Wide and sidewalks, bike lanes, visual cues to slow traffic, transit amenities, landscape separation for motorized lanes and pedestrians. And let's see. All right, 24 of you guys have participated. So thank you so much for engaging with this. And again, I'm seeing different people participate throughout this process. Um, so I wanna encourage you, we're gonna do this again and there's a survey at the end. Good traffic flow, calming, no bumps. Sidewalks, 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 lots of um, conversation about sidewalks. In addition, lots of conversation about keeping the mature trees. Don't take away yards, so your space is very important to you. All right, um, Ernie, mature trees to be saved if any way, uh, if there's any type of improvements. I hear you, Ernie, and I hear it from many of you guys, your tree canopy is really, really important. Oh. That's a question. Will mature trees be saved if any way of improvements? Uh, thank you, Ernie. I'm gonna allow somebody to answer that in the chat box as we go through this. 27 you guys have participated so much. A roundabout at Collister and Hill. I saw that one pop up. Um, visual cues. So I'm seeing a lot of repeats at this point. So that tells me it's good timing to move on to the next question. And again, wanna highlight um, certainly many of you guys are concerned about, may have just joined us at the end. So I wanna highlight that you have a survey to also answer. All right, with that being saved, um, with actually that being our last slide, I wanna start opening it up for questions. And I wanna talk about what that's going to look like. Because if I unmute all of you, you're all gonna have questions. You're all gonna come at me um, at the same time. So there's several ways in which we can start this Q&A uh, segment of this presentation. 
You can either put the question in the chat box and we'll go through each one of those and I'll answer it. Or another way, if you want to verbally be heard, I do encourage you to participate. You can raise your hand with the emoji and give you an idea of what that looks like. In the right hand corner of the screen, you should see your name as one of the participants. So for instance, I'm seeing 41 participants on here. There's a way in which you can raise your hand. So if you don't wanna answer the question in the chat, but you'd rather do it verbally, we're gonna be paying attention to the participant list and we're gonna be paying attention to who raised their hands. All right, so let me see here. First question at the bottom and I'll work my way back up as it's brought to my attention. Okay, and I also uh, got noticed that we do have a hand up. But first question is, what is the timeline for this project? And that's a really, really good question. And so I do wanna talk about the schedule really quick. So we're coming to you, this is our first open house. This is our opportunity to engage with you. I anticipate coming back to you in the month of September. And in September, we're going to come to you with ideas, stuff we heard, stuff that we definitely heard you guys don't want us to do, and then ideas of what we potentially could do based off of feedback. We're going to have a similar open house. It will be virtually out of just the natural constraints of what's going on. And through that virtual open house, we're gonna engage with you once again. We're gonna ask you, did we get it right? If we did not get it right, if the majority of you have come to us and said, this isn't going to fit our neighborhood, this isn't our vision, we'll come back to you again. And so I like to say that we're going to have this done here in a couple months, but that's, that's really not the reality of many of these projects and how we engage with the public, because to us, it's so important that we engage with you, we walk through this process together. Ideally, if we come with a solution that we can get everybody on board, then hopefully we could potentially have this adopted by the commission in January. And if not, we're gonna come back next spring and we'll go through the process and we'll take it to the commission. So I hesitate to say that we're gonna be done with this in five months, in six months. We're gonna be done with this when you guys tell us we're done, when we got it right. And if that right is nothing at all, and that's what we're hearing from you, then that's what we're gonna to take to the commission. If we hear from you that there are some enhancements you want made, and we all can come into agreement, and we feel like we're in a good place to take it to the commission, then we'll go to the commission. But I wanna, my commitment to you is to help us walk through this process for me to listen to you guys, for us to engage several different ways, and um, hopefully by next spring, we'll have a product to take to the commission and we can get it adopted. So good question about the schedule. Just know this is first of several occasions where I'm going to be out in front of you to talk about how we can participate in this process. All right, so I have to go through these questions. So I'm gonna scroll up, but first I do have a hand up. Um, nope, the hand went down. So I'm gonna scroll back up through these questions and hit each one as I go through. So one, encourage you guys to continue to participate, ask me the question, uh, let's see. Please ensure you help all stakeholders understand the facts and get them out regularly. I definitely understand that. Last time false and or misleading information was distributed. My contact information is in the chat box. My contact information is posted on the landing page within the website. Please, I encourage you definitely get in touch with me. I will be the one controlling the information that it goes out. So if you hear your neighbors may be chatting, Encourage them to get in touch with me and I will come to your neighborhood and stand on your front porch and have that conversation. It's so important that you're right, that the information we put forward is factual, is a reflection of what we're hearing and is data driven. And with all of those things in mind, I will be distributing those. So if you want factual information as it comes forward, either contact me via phone, contact me via email, ask me to come out and chat with you because I'll be more than happy to or look on the website because that's where you're gonna find the accurate information. So Pat, thank you so much for highlighting that. Um, if there's at any point that there's some concern about some of the information that's coming out, like I said, guys, I'm a phone call away and I have no problem meeting and coming and chatting on your, on your doorstep. Don, we had this discussion in 2011-ish, you're right. And there was a strong input by people who live on Catulpa and ACHD said it would not be revisited. There have been no facilities on, uh, no fatalities on Collister, and the road has been this way for, I'm sorry, somehow, um, I think the question changed. 
done. Let's just get back to your point as I try to finish your question. And again, guys, follow along in the chat box as these questions come up because somehow I may have, oh. There has been no fatalities on Collister and the road has been this way for decades. If you don't feel safe, use a different path. Don, thank you so much. Your input is, in value, is very valuable as I recognize you do reside on Collister. I will highlight that Collister, when we came out in 2011, it was specifically about pedestrian facilities. Based off of the input and the insight in which several of you guys provided, the commission did not move this project forward. Since 2011, we have received several requests for us to go back and re-examine this space. Primarily, it's because we've got a local school, we've got main attractors, and we're seeing a lot of usage in different means besides just vehicles. With that being said, Dawn, I do want to continue this conversation with you and I, um, because if we go through this process and we do find that there is a vision and a goal that the neighborhood sees, we're going to work through this together. And so... While at the time we may have said we were not coming back or we were not revisiting this, I can't speak necessarily to that. I was not, quite frankly, I was not here, um, but we are taking a different approach than we took in 2011, and that's really important, and I want that to be noted. We are coming to you to help us make a determination what that vision and what that goal is for your neighborhood. We're not coming to you to make a determination that sidewalks is the right solution. So together, through your input and insight, um, I'm hoping that we can come up with something that's going to meet everybody's needs, while at the same time recognizing the rural nature of your neighborhood, recognizing the value you guys have put on your tree canopies, and recognizing those who have resided there for so long. So Dawn, um, I may, that may or may not answer your question very clear, but I do want to encourage you, like I said, let's talk, you and I. Um, I'd like to go through some of your concerns that you've highlighted. All right, a couple other questions. I, like I said, I'm moving from the top to the bottom. Oh, I'm going to look up here. Um, let's see. I hear that there is one about interim solutions, something that we can do in the time being. And you know what? That is also some of the solutions that we could come out of this process. So if we find out that there may be some pilot type programs, um, it's not that we haven't done that before. We have. And so as we approach this, and as we approach this feedback from you guys, we will too also be looking through that um, as options. Kathy, I'm very concerned about that adding pedestrian and or car improvements made to the west side of Collister from Contolpa to Hill increases the existing right of way would be detrimental to my property, including reducing property size and eliminating property features, compromising the existing and functioning well, used as the primary source of irrigation and reducing yard features as well as space. I completely understand. Uh, to give you guys a little bit of history, this is not my first project in which I went out to a corridor specific in the Valley to talk about how we're going to enhance it for bikes and pets. I will just bring your attention. We did this very similar outreach effort with Kootenai, where we went to Kootenai, met with the neighbors to figure out a means in which how are we going to enhance it for kids walking and biking to school and walking and biking to neighborhood attractors. I will tell you, we were able to walk out of that project without touching people's right away or expanding outside of our existing footprint. And as we go into each one of these projects, our goal is to find the means in which we can stay within our existing footprint while also meeting the needs of the neighborhood. Can we meet that goal every time? We not always. I mean, there's sometimes we can, there's sometimes we can't, and that's me being honest. But I hear your point and I hear how important it is for you and your property, Kathy, for us to take that and, and note that. And so, Kathy, um, I again, just like I had chatted with Debbie, I'm sorry, not Debbie, uh, Dawn, uh, why don't you go ahead and give me a call and I'll come out there and take a look at your property. Uh, let's see. I'm just kind of scrolling through this. What is considered getting it right? How many people need to be on board? Well, that's a really good question. And I will tell you this, this question comes from Hillary. Hillary, there is no predetermined number, no predetermined percentage. Um, we're going to go have these continued conversations. And as we go through it, my goal is to bring a project to the commission that enables them to make a decision, a confident decision based off of feedback. And so as a project manager, it's not my decision if a project actually happens or not. You have elected the commissioners to represent you. 
those individuals, those elected officials are the ones who make the determination if a project moves forward or not. So I could take a project, for example, that has 80% support and your commissioners could make a decision not to support it and actually not move it forward. So my job is really just to bring the facts to the commissioners uh, and to present all the facts and present all the data and prevent all, present all the feedback and they make that ultimate decision. So what is considered getting it right? Getting it right means we're in a confident position to take it to the commission and to present the data. And the commissioners will be the ones who make the ultimate decision if we move it forward or not, as they are your elected body. So I'm not necessarily can answer how many people need to be on board. Like I said, there's no specific percentage. There's no specific number. I will tell you on Kootenay Street, when we went out the a second time, we actually went out three times. The second time we had a, a very low percentage. It was probably 50 people in support and then you know 52 in support and maybe 48 or something against. That is not a clear picture of what the neighborhood wants. And so we went out a third time and the third time that number changed to approximately 78% in support. So we felt at that point, let's take it to the commission and let's have that commission have that debate. Moving forward, I'm gonna keep looking through these questions. Um, if sidewalks were, be, were to be constructed, would ACHD need to acquire additional property or would the sidewalks reside within the existing right-of-way? Candy, good question. Um, we're not even sure if sidewalks is the right solution yet. So as we go through this, we'll work with the neighbors to figure out what is the right solution, hear from all of you guys, put forward some examples. Without me having a really good understanding of what that footprint is on Collister, um, I'm not necessarily there to be able to answer that question. Again, I'd like to say in a perfect world, we're going to stay within the existing footprint of the pro of the existing road. Um, so that way we do have less impact to property owners. But until we get to this next stage, I won't know what that really looks like quite yet. Timeline for the project, Thomas, I hope I answered that. Mike, highlighting that you live on the southwest corner of Hill and Collister. Let's chat. All right, will private wells be saved? This is my primary irrigation. Kathy, if I know best, it's really not to get in the way of people's access to water. So um, yes, we will look to the irrigation, we'll look to your access to your water. Um, I think in the state of Idaho, water rights come first before anything else. So Kathy, I hear you. Will mature trees be saved if in the way of improvements? Um, Ernie, I think I may have highlight, I may have already answered this, but we're going to look to the tree canopy. I recognize how important that is. Um, I will say on previous projects, we also do look at the canopy of trees. You guys have a neighborhood that's important to you. Canopy and tree shade is so important, and I'm I am taking very good note of that. All right, I can't see any additional questions. I'm looking to some folks. Are they at the bottom or at the top? Just Scroll it down. Apparently there's a lot of questions at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. Would there be interim safety efforts made for pedestrians using Collister between now and when any possible construction activities are complete? We have done interim enhancements before. If we get this project adopted, either this year or early next year. We are doing everything within our power to advance these projects to design and construction early. Um, we recognize that we should not have a concept and then put it up on the shelf and come back at it five years later. Um, it is our goal now to look to these projects, move them from concept. So to go over what this process looks like, we go through concept. After concept, we go into design and at design, this is actually when we actually get to talk about the details associated with the project, and we actually come back out to the public again. So in design, this we invite you back to the table to say, like, are we getting this right? Is this the vision you had for your community or your neighborhood or your street? After design, we go into what's called right of way. We sometimes don't even need that because, like I said, we try to stay within the existing footprint. Outside of that, we go into construction. So this potentially has the ability to be under construction maybe in the next four or five years. 
um, which is quick for a construction project, especially as it pertains to roads. Um, but then again, that is a programming specific, you know, programming really is specific uh, on the available funds and where we're at with the project itself. So in the meantime, can we look at interim safety efforts? Let's talk as we go through this. I'm not gonna discount that. I'm not gonna say no, I think it's too early. What is the likelihood of someone coming out to Hill and call us or to see in person what the concerns are? Very likely. Mike, I will gladly come out there and stand on that corner with you if you like. So uh, why don't you, you have my phone number, you have my email, why don't you get in touch and we will come out there and visit with you. I see you clapping your hands, so I assume that's the right answer. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, what is the likelihood of something coming out? Okay, I think I'm seeing this one. Traffic is increasing, things don't stay the same forever, progress requires change. Claire, that is a statement I'm going to assume was just to be read off to everybody. I don't think it's a question. Um, also, doing nothing again is not really a viable option. While folks living on college should get their input heard and weighted appropriately, this neighborhood needs to be considered in its totality. Yes, Pat, I hear from you, and that's why we're doing this. It's so important. Those who navigate through the space, we want to hear from you, and those who are um, actually reside on concert, we want to hear from you too. And so we will do everything in our power to have those conversations. Nobody's input outweighs anyone's input, right? So we want everybody to be treated equally as we go through this. Solutions are important, and it's my job to get us to a solution that actually meets everybody's needs. And it's not an easy job. All right. Those of us who live out in college or with children need sidewalks for our kids to get to school safely. Thank you. Um, Mike, I'm hearing a question. Why does ACH use Collister as a main truck route? I'm assuming, are you saying our vehicles are going down Collister? Or just Collister oh, in general? Okay, well, Collister is a collector and that's part of just the way the nature of the street has been designed originally. And so our hope through this is we're going to find a means in which we can, one, reduce the speeds, two, look to traffic, and that's called traffic calming. So it's addressing those two concerns. Um, people, let's see, wait, hold on. Why do you have to buy properties if they have to? All right, I'm gonna finish the Collister question from Mike regarding it is a collector. It's the way in which it was built. That's why a lot of volumes of traffic actually have been funneled to Collister. Um, we are now looking at it as a means of which, how can we enhance it for all vehicles, both vehicles, pedestrians, as well as cyclists. And so um, that's kind of what this process looks like. Why does ACG, okay. Will ACG have to buy property if they have to? It's too soon to even talk about that. Thank you, Don. Um, let's see. I, Kathy, I tried to talk to somebody about my issues and they did not have adequate options. I'd love to talk to someone about that. Kathy, contact information, all there in the chat box. Um, okay, lots of questions, actually just statements. ACH, you should contact folks. Oops. If ACH, you should contact folks living somewhere. Can we find that question? On Collister. Yes. And if you haven't been contacted yet, um, I want to encourage you to share with your neighbors my information. We did go and hang door hangers on every door on Collister. Um, you all should have received a mailer highlighting that this meeting was taking place. And if you need me to come talk to you or chat with you, I'd be more than happy to. Um, we lived on college for 20 years. My son walked to college elementary every day. Thank you. These are just statements. Um, keep going. And the needs of neighbors not on college? Yes, because a street in Ada County does not just work for the people who reside on it. And we know that. And so we have to look at it holistically. Cost of Collister Street residents. ACHG, this is, there. no, there is no local improvement district. I repeat, there is no local improvement district for Collister. Um, if any improvements or enhancements come, it will be paid for by ACHG. Is there a way to cut down the amount of traffic, maybe making a better thoroughfare? Through traffic calming, um, that is a means in which we do go back and evaluate a street and put in enhancements. 
Traffic calming has two purposes. It's either to address the volume, so the number of vehicles going down the street, or speeds. And so traffic calming is not off the table for this project. And if you know, we've heard from you that speed is of concern, volume is of concern. And so we'll take that back in our design features. Deborah, well, oh, hold on. Mike, it's not safe for people. Nobody uses 36th Street. Okay, uh, thank you. We'll look into that. Um, Debbie, Debbie, welcome. Uh, how much importance will you place on the low stress bike route on parts of Collister? Will you reduce the speed to accommodate the level of stress for a low stress route? So a couple things, and there's this notion out there that if I go and reduce the speed on a road, that that's actually going to change people's behavior. That is not the case. If I'm going to change people's behavior, I have to look to examining what does the road feel like? So when you're driving down the road, does it feel like it's a big thoroughfare and you could go fast? And if that's the case, we actually have to go back and examine changing the structure of the road. So Debbie, to your point, is there a lot of uh, importance on a low stress bikeway? Certainly. This was identified in the roadways to bikeways plan. This was identified in the Northwest Boise bike and pedestrian neighborhood plan. We have heard several occasions that Collister is a means in which people use to ride and they use it to get around on their bikes. And so, yes, the point about the low stress bike route is really important and is part of our considerations as we look to Collister. Can we make it a toll road? No, we cannot make it a toll road. <laughs> we need Boise PD to patrol more to catch the speeds. Yes, enforcement is another piece of the puzzle. We can go and change the road. We can go and add these enhancements, but quite frankly, um, you are always going to have those people who have the behavior that they just care less. And that's when we're going to rely on Boise PD to help us through that. All right, just other statement points. Okay, guys, we got lots of questions out of here. I hope I answered many of your questions. If I didn't, I want to encourage you again. My phone number and my email is right there. I'm more than willing, Mike, to come and chat with you. And um, before we end this, let me see a couple more questions. Peter Cameras to catch speeders. You know, from what I understand in the state of Idaho, we can't use cameras at stoplights to catch those who are speeding through them. In addition, I don't believe we have state statute that allows us to actually catch speeders through cameras. Um, they do that in Oregon. We don't do that in Idaho. I'm sure there's a lot to be said about Big Brother being in the, in the uh, mix there. So that is not necessarily uh, a privilege that is afforded to our law enforcement in the state of Idaho right now. All right. I think that wraps it up. Lots of questions, lots of statements. I will tell you, uh, we did capture all of these. We have them written down. Again, a couple of things I want to emphasize. The schedule. I'm coming back to you guys in September. So be on the, on the lookout for that. Again, for me to communicate, how you can anticipate us to communicate. You will receive a, uh, another notice on your door, another door hanger that says, hey, come participate. You're going to receive a mailer. And for those neighbors who did not show up in today's meeting and did not participate in Survey Monkey, you're going to get a letter from me. And I'm going to invite you back. So tell your neighbors that they're not here today. They didn't know about this. They're going to receive a letter that says, I recognize you didn't participate. Your input is important. You live on Collister. Call me up. Let's talk. For those of you guys who wanted me to come and chat with you, Mike, you're one of them. Kathy, you're one. I'm sorry, Dawn, you're one of them. Um, call, let email, let's make some arrangements, let's chat. With that being said, the last thing I guess want to draw your attention to is the Survey Monkey. It's right there. It's also in the link in the chat box. Can we get it in the link one more time? All right, it's in the link. Again, it's so, so very important that you guys take a moment to go fill out that Survey Monkey. That's the information we're also going to be using. We did capture everything today, but it doesn't mean that we didn't miss something. And so um, please use that survey monkey to continue to communicate uh, your, your highlights from today's meeting and email, call if you guys have any more questions. And I'll be back on this here at 5.30. So um, if your neighbors didn't, weren't on here or if you didn't get enough and you want to come see us again, I invite you back. So with that being said, have a wonderful evening. Thank you guys so much for participating. And I look forward to hearing and working with you guys in the coming months. Take care, guys.